there's so many opportunities with digital nomad life and being counselors and being a counselor in a time where there's so much abundance. So if you're listening to this and you have any desire to be like, I want to travel more or you just get out of the entire like living in one place life, you can do it. Hi, I'm Kim Tolson and I'm the traveling therapist. It's my passion to teach therapists how to navigate online private practices and multiple income streams so they can travel the world. I'm a digital nomad with a virtual insurance-based private therapy practice and a multi six-figure coaching business. I'm obsessed with entrepreneurship and developing tools that can help therapists live an adventurous lifestyle. In this podcast, I will discuss my journey as a digital nomad, I'll chat with other traveling therapists, and help you navigate the complexities of running an online insurance-based practice. I'm so glad to have you with me on this journey. Welcome everybody to another episode of The Traveling Therapist. I'm here today with Stephen Malora. He's a traveling therapist. He's in my traveling therapist Facebook group, and I've kind of seen him talking about his adventure. So I asked him to come and be on the podcast because I would love for him to share his story. He's going through a transition now with traveling and trying to decide the the next right thing for him to travel in. And we'll probably talk about that. But Stephen, I'd like to just turn it over to you and ask you just right off, like, how did you go from just being your traditional therapist to a traveling therapist? Well, first, Kim, thank you very much for inviting me on. I really appreciate it. Well, like most people, the pandemic has changed how everything, everyone was doing things. Now, I remember March 2019, the stupid virus was coming in. I was like, eh, whatever, I'll transition. I was fully private practice in an office. Yeah. And I was like, all right, fine. We'll do telecounseling for two weeks and, you know, see what happens. And then I, I just never stopped. So from there, I realized, okay, great. I can do telecounseling full-time, get plenty of clients. It's a lot easier. I don't have the commute. And once I started thinking about the, you know, benefits of that, the next thing was, why am I in Pittsburgh where it's dreary and cold all the time? And when I could be working from the beach. And Facebook was helpful for that. You know, I was part of a few digital nomad groups and, Mm -hmm. of course, every every counseling group under the sun so hearing about other people doing their digital nomad life and their you know traveling therapist life i was like i need it I'm like i'm ready to go yeah i'm out of here <laughs> yes okay that's that's awesome yeah i mean i think for me anyway all those groups are so inspiring i'm like i'm doing this and then as we were chatting before i we just officially started our journey as a digital nomad so this is our first Airbnb that we're staying in and we have like a couple more planned and that's it. We're just totally winging this thing. Fantastic. But it's so fun to just be able to go, like you said, and just, you know, not have to be stuck in one place. So, so this last time that you went out, how long were you gone and how did you travel? And maybe you could just tell everybody a little bit about that. So the last time I was out was beginning of November of 2021. And I drew, I bought a Ram Pro Master City. Me and my brother built some internal stuff for the bed, for some of the furniture. We made it all nice and pretty. Not, it's not a great van build, like you see the fancy ones on on online, but it's good enough for me. So cool. absolutely love it. Uh, her name is Eloise. Oh, um, I love that. <laughs> yeah, right. Everyone, good, good name. Anyway, so we drove down. Two days, getting down to Florida, spent my time in Orlando. I went to grad school in Orlando and lived there for a little bit. So I have a lot of friends, love being at the beach. Unfortunately, I was following a cold front down, but that's okay. Even even when I was going down south, it was still, even when I was freezing, it was still better and warmer than Pittsburgh. So it was a great trip. I spent 12 days down there, came back up, and I was actually planning on already being down there again. But a bunch of craziness happened in January, so I had to push it back. And now I'm going to, my plan is to leave tomorrow. Nice. Oh, my gosh. And, and you were telling me before we started recording that it's cold and rainy where you are right now. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, it's definitely cold. It was raining all day yesterday. And it is, it's the storm. And we'll, we'll see how, if I can get out, but that's mm-hmm. okay. Because even if I can't get out tomorrow, I can roll with the punches and get out Sunday. And it's perfectly yeah. fine. Yeah. 
So tell tell me about your band. I love these band build outs. Like I, I like watch YouTube videos with this stuff. I know that sounds weird because I don't even have a band to build out, but it, you know, I just like, what are the, what are a couple of the things you put in that have really been like a necessity, like while you're traveling in the van? I'd love to hear about that. You know, it's actually not much. Oh, so yeah? I, and I also love, I've watched a lot of the van life videos <laughs> before I ever considered buying one and doing anything. So, you know, my brother built a bed from, you know, two by fours, two by sixes, and some of the basic stuff. And, but my biggest thing is that I really need is the battery pack and the solar charger. And yeah. because all my work is electronic, and of course I have, um, I, two is one, one is none. So I have three different ways to usually get online. One yeah. is the hotspot, one is my cell phone if the hotspot dies. And usually I'll be close enough to a Wi Fi spot where I can just plug into that outside of either Planet Fitness or Publix or whatever. And Smart. of course, VPN on everything. So everything's HIPAA compliance and mm -hmm. everything's good. Oh, that's so smart. Okay, so th three different. So what's the Wi-Fi that you, I'm guessing is like a portable, like um, like I had a, what do they call it? A MIFI or something? Oh yeah, I have that for T-Mobile, yeah. That's what you have. Okay, oh, the T-Mobile Wi-Fi, okay. Yep, I've had no problems with that. I was very concerned about like, getting signal in different places, but I've worked with that for, you know, almost two weeks straight. It was great. Nice. Okay. So, so did you have 5G with that? Cause I know there are- uh, Yes. Yeah. 5G. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, it worked really well everywhere I took it, except for where we lived right on the coast. We had no, it didn't work at all. It was insane. Like I could not mm -hmm. get a signal with that thing. I don't know why they said the towers were down every time I called, but I, I don't know. That was kind of bizarre, but, but it did work well for me also. Good, good. Yeah. So in the van, so there's no power. So you have to. Yeah. So all my power is on my battery pack. I have a, what is it? Jackery 240. It's a 240 watt or volts. I'm not quite sure, but it's based, no, 240 watts. That's it. And when I'm driving, I'm charging. When I'm at rest, I pull up the solar panels. I'm charging that, even if it's just putting it in the, um, in the windshield and yeah it's been great i know have wow. like i use a lot of power both in regards to just doing all my my laptop seeing clients doing that stuff but uh, i have not had any problems with none of my batteries have ever gone to zero so it's been great. really that is awesome oh my gosh okay so so you get to see your clients through your computer yep. and it just you could just recharge it no problem with these solar panels and 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 the, and the the battery charges as you drive is what you're saying. Yep. So wow. Apple 12 volt chargers as well while I'm driving. So that's been great. Yeah. That is so interesting. Yeah, because I just wonder how people do that. And then if you need Wi-Fi, you can hook up to Planet Fitness or something like that. Yeah. What What are some good places? Like, do you have good tips for people that are might need well, something? Well, I like Planet Fitness. I now have okay. a favorite one by Flagler Beach Airport, where it's like this is like the perfect place to be. You can it's you can park on the side where you get enough Wi-Fi signal to go through their system. But if it like goes down, of course, I it immediately jumps to either the um, either my cell phone or the uh, other hotspot. So that's been great. Other tips, you know, I don't have a toilet or anything in my bathroom, or excuse me, I don't have any toilet or bathroom in my car. So if you're going that route, it's very beneficial to have a national gym membership. Okay. Uh, or maybe a membership to one of these loves or pilot flying J's where you can use their facilities. I like the planet in this. It's very, um, yeah, it's, it, they're usually 24 hours, if not 24 hours close enough. If it's three in the morning and you got to go, you can go. Wow. So you just park in the parking lot and then just run in there if you need to use the bathroom and whenever you need to yep. take a shower, you just find a plan, plan of fitness. Yes. And if you actually go on all these like van life things and they're joking about like, oh, I'm been three weeks since I've taken a shower. I'm not that. <laughs> I'm like working out every day and working, taking a shower every day. I'm very clean. So I'm like, I, I couldn't live that kind of life. Yeah. But, that's funny. I guess that's and, an added benefit to having the plate of fitness so that you can work out too if you want to. Yep. That's cool. Yeah, absolutely. The other thing is, uh, depending on how you want to go about cooking, mm -hmm. the, I have an electric little stovetop kind of um it's, it's basically half a pot half a pan and that's served me very well i'm usually cooking up soup or whatever i can get you know i'm also usually going to the grocery stores either every day or every other day so fresh fruits vegetables anything that's peelable 
and it's um yeah it's pretty easy once you get used to it oh that's so cool yeah wow okay so gosh i have so many questions <laughs> i didn't know this was going to turn into a like a gadget episode but it's so helpful i yeah, think for, for people to know how you're managing all that stuff so so you just sleep in there every night or do you like sometimes just go to friends houses and stuff and hang out there last time last trip i was mostly staying at other people's yeah guest rooms mm -hmm. but this time i'm going to be doing a lot more actually sleeping out of the van i'm going okay. to be going for three weeks and i'm going to have one hotel room a week that's all if I happen, if a friend offers one, I'll do once, but I'm really trying to keep it like, I really want to try out doing this long term. So like, A, I can get used to it and B, so one day I can upgrade and get one of those big fancy RVs and, you know, get rid of my apartment and the road will be my home. Wow. That's so exciting. Yeah. Right before we hit record on this, you were saying that you're really already thinking about you need to upgrade from the van to like mm -hmm. an RV or something like that. Yeah. I love Eloise my van but <laughs> no when you look at these really really cool like thor motor coaches and they're bigger but like my my van is very stealthy right now. like i could park it anywhere no one would even notice this one the ones i'm looking at might be a little bit more conspicuous but i think enough that no one will bother me nice oh my gosh oh that's so cool yeah so do you think you'll keep your travels just like like coming down like south like florida or do you have goals to go other places in the country I would love to do a full across the Southern States trip because I have friends in in Orlando, friends in Tampa, friends in Miami, one friend in Texas, one in New Mexico, and one in LA. Oh. And I would love to do across the Southern States, visit everyone, and you know, take a full month while working and just go back and forth. I would absolutely love that. Oh, that sounds amazing. Yeah. Now was it you, Stephen? I think it was in the traveling therapist group that when you first started your journey, you had posted something around like, like it can get kind of lonely on the road. Oh was yeah. That, was absolutely. that you? Yeah. Yes. I thought so. I wanted to ask you about that and just how that was for you. And I know you, you said you met up with friends and stuff, but just, I'm just curious how you managed that or, you know, if you have any tips or suggestions for people. Well, once again, if the weather holds and I can do the things, I have a few different events actually going on tonight and tomorrow. I'm running my entrepreneur group at Pittsburgh tomorrow morning. It's a oh, healthcare cool. worker meetup and a social club. So I'm going to overload my extroversion, get like really fill that <laughs> tank up as much as possible. And then the plan is Saturday night, go and not talk to anyone for two days because we're both <laughs> very focused on getting down south. So wow. that, that's one thing. If you're an extrovert like me, try to plan like filling up before you go mm -hmm. the other thing is call friends it's a long drive call you know the digital stuff helps a little bit but the other thing is really just getting out of my comfort zone and talking to strangers and being like hey how about that weather what's going on yeah Be my best friend you're the list of my fears <laughs> so i'm not too vulnerable but sharing enough to be like all right maybe we're not maybe nothing will come with this and i'll never talk to this person again but at least i'm engaging with someone new and that's perfectly fine. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yes. Okay. It also helps. I'm, you know, meet up, event brights. I'm already mm -hmm. scheduled for a walking group for when I get down to Orlando and celebration. Oh, nice. So I'm going to, to go do that one of the nights. Yeah. Oh, fun. That's such a great idea. Yeah, I think those are some of the suggestions in the in the Facebook group when you posted that was like meetup.com or you know, try to try to plan early and get hooked up with some sort of social group wherever you're gonna mm -hmm. be. Yeah, because I'm yeah. like you. I'm an extrovert. I like to go and do things and be with people, you know. This entire pandemic thing has been miserable, especially in my state where it's like, no, I'm, I, I really, I always used to think I was an introvert, but I lost my mind. And I'm just like, no, I need human connection or I'm going to die. Yeah. This is bad. I hear you. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Well, I'm glad that you're working that out. And I'm just curious, you were you were just mentioning like your entrepreneurial group or what is that you were talking about? I'm yeah, just so curious I'm, about that. I basically started an entrepreneur group, I think a year ago. Oh, and cool. we meet bi-monthly, so every, every, no, I, every other month, so not every two times a month, we meet every other month. Yeah. We just get meet at Panera, we talk about business, we talk about our schemes, how do we help improve our businesses and 
you know, go from there. And you don't actually have to be a full entrepreneur. I've had people come in from, you know, nonprofits, being employees in other places and saying, hey, I want to work within the company, an entrepreneur or doing something else and or starting either joining a nonprofit, starting volunteering. There's plenty of other options, but it's one of the things I'm running. Yeah. That is so cool. Yeah. So, so in addition to being a therapist, you're also an entrepreneur. Do you have other things going on? Like I always talk about, I've got all these multiple income streams on top of being a therapist, but do you have stuff like that going on too? Right now, my primary is just therapy. Okay. In the long term, I want to be an angrier and more ethical version of Tony Robbins. Oh, I like seminars that. Seminars <laughs> and you know, getting people, getting people, you know, in mass, getting getting the mental health. I like that. Very cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Okay, well, keep us updated on that one. I will definitely keep you posted as soon as I have a seminar. <laughs> yeah. So let's see. So, so you have a private practice right now. Are how's it going with your clients? Are you telling them that you're traveling, or oh, yeah. do y'all talk about that? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I tell them. I'm usually in my mobile command center. Hey, this is what it is. This is how I'm keeping in HIPAA compliance. A lot of times, so I use a virtual background most of the time. But if they ask, I'll say, "All right, cool. Here's a tour of the van. Here's how I'm like keeping it secure. Here's how you know if someone was like." pressing up their ear against the door, like they can hear some things, but nothing actually that'll be hip or breaking or anything like that. This is what I do. And everyone seems to love it. Yeah, that's been my experience. All my clients are like, wow, where are you going next? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's also helpful. There was one point I did see one client in person mm -hmm. recently. We did a walk and talk in oh, cool. the greater Orlando area. And I'm, I'm licensed both PA and Florida. Okay. So, and I'm actually working on getting my license in other, another state. Yeah, it was actually great to be able to say, all right, well, I'm going to be here anyway. Let's do a, you know, some outside in the park therapy. Yes. Oh, that is awesome. Now, do you, do you bill insurances or are you just straight mm -hmm. like private pay? You do. Okay. Mostly insurances and EAPs. Yes. I'm, okay. I'm every single one of them. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> so you got plenty of clients coming in, I bet. Oh, yeah, yeah. And right now, like January has been a little slow, but now I'm overbooked. So we're good. Oh, isn't it funny how that ebb and flow goes? Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Really is. Hmm. Wow. So, okay, let's see. I just want to, I just I have all kinds of questions. So right now, like, I'm just curious about the insurance piece. Have you had any trouble? Like it says, you said you're licensed in Florida and Pennsylvania yep. and maybe a third state. Are you having any trouble with being in different locations or? No, okay. not at all. So I have my biller. She takes care of that. It's all virtual. We do the, well, I guess with the new, uh, with the new location codes, it's more based on where the client is rather than the counselor, which yes. is, you know, which was, which is always what it is, you know, point of origin for healthcare is always a client or patient, but um, it seems like insurance is now getting into that more, like at least updating themselves and, you know, getting to that point where it's like, okay, now we have the right codes for where the locations are. Yes. Yeah. I think we're all kind of curious about how that's going to turn out, you know? Um, so just, for anybody listening, there are new location codes. One is 10, which is the client is actually physically in their home at the time of the session. And then the other location, 02, is what we all used to use when we did our billing. And that is now, if the client is not in their home, but they're in some other location, like their office or their car or something like that. Not confusing at all, huh, Kim? No. <laughs> No, not at all. And to top it all off, do. the insurance companies aren't even paying the claims yet that have the what? 10 code. Like they're rejecting them, even though we're supposed to be using it right now. So it's been a little complicated. This is why people like me switch to life coaching. Yeah, there you go. Pay me a hundred dollars. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> and you can do it from anywhere. You don't have to worry about state regulations or anything like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like Pennsylvania, Florida, they're fine with you not being physically in the state. Just your yeah. client has to be. Yeah, it's been fine. Awesome. Yeah, cool. Okay. Let's see. What else do I want to ask you about? Okay, I just, I like to ask this question. Like any lessons that you're, you've learned on this journey so far? Be open and balanced. So I love travel now. Yeah. I hated, hated, hated travel growing up. 
You did. Because I'm always miserable. Tell me about it. My dad, like, pack in the car, me at 5 a.m. with, with, you know, seven people in the car. We're going to New York. And then he's screaming, this is our last year, every year. It's so it's like, okay, well, this isn't stressful at all. Go to a place, or even when we're maybe it's not even exactly that. Maybe it's like a summer trip and we're going someplace. But there's always these expectations. And, you know, even I took a trip down to Tampa uh, a few years ago. Great, but still have to go through the airport, have to do, have to be here at this time, there at this time, a little too pre planned. So my last trip, I was very free form. I was very much okay. like, I'm just going to go and no planning, barely let anyone know I was going down. I was like, I'll text them when I get there. And then it was great because it was like, it was, but it was almost a little too free. Form. It could have used it just a smidge of planning. Yeah. So if you're like me and you happen to just do the pendulum st- swing from one extreme to the other, try to balance yourself out. Nice. Okay. And when you say it could have been a little more scheduled, is that, were you finding that it was like down to the wire with some things and you didn't know like what to do with yourself or like, 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 well, you, yeah, you there was some mean? boredom or there were some people I oh. wanted to see, but our, our schedules didn't align. I like maybe see. if I planned this a little bit more, it could have been a little bit better, but it was also great because I didn't have an end date. I was just like, I'll come up when I come up and go back to, you know, Pittsburgh whenever I feel like it. Mm-hmm. So that has been also been very helpful. Um, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's a good tip. Yeah. Cause it can get so stressful if you're like on some tight itinerary and it's like, gosh, and we're even finding that. Oh, go ahead. No, that's been most of my like vacations or travel things where I, it, it always has felt like too much pressure. Even when, even the ones I schedule for myself where it's like, okay, we're still doing a lot of things that are, there, there's just a lot of, I have to be here at this time. And it's, it's, it, it's not flowing as organically as I want to. So, yes. Yeah. yeah. And it's been so interesting doing this podcast because so many people have these early childhood stories about travel, you know, either it was awesome or it was like, like you said, the dad that, you know, is just the whole thing was just miserable and stressful and not fun at all. That's a lot of my life, you know, okay. I'm making up for a lot of bad experiences in my upbringing. Sometimes like overcompensating the other direction, but I try to, you know, scale it back and just say, all right, I'm compensating and going toward like, what would a happy traveling experience look like? Apparently it's in a van and it's very free form for me. I love that. Oh my gosh. And even realizing, okay, so I, I swung this way. Now I just need to pull it back a little bit and find the perfect amount of everything for me. Yes, absolutely. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I think that's going to be really helpful. Definitely. So while you were talking, it also occurred to me, are you, are you keeping a residence up in Pennsylvania or do you go back and stay with like family or friends or how how are you? I have a residence in Pennsylvania. I'm keeping the apartment for now. Mm -hmm. If I, when I get my big upgraded RV, I will need a business virtual address and potentially, so I need to figure out the residency requirements there because technically it is illegal to be homeless in the United States of America. Right. But there's a lot of leeway about what that actually means. So if we're choosing a state of residency, I would really like to go back to living in Florida. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, I'll buy a shack and just like right. put the stuff I can't fit in the car right there. I'll come back later. Mm-hmm. Yes, totally. Oh gosh, that's such a hard thing to figure out. I mean, we basically just settled on using my mom's address in Florida right yeah. now. That's what Perfect. we're gonna do. Yeah. Because there are things, it's like your health insurance, your car insurance, like you actually have Mm -hmm. to have an address for a bank account, credit cards. Mm -hmm. They want you to have a physical address. Yeah. Yeah. And fortunately, I have a lot of friends who would be willing to just say, sure, we'll put you on the lease. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good solution. (laughs) Yeah. So I've I've been talking with a few people about this. I've been pre-planning and yeah, we'll see. Or I can... I was reading some, you know, 1940s detective novel the other day and some, it's like, oh, I wonder if I can get like a marina address without actually living in a houseboat there. I wonder if I can actually just stay in a residence because it's like, there's some options for that. That's smart. Yeah. And, you know, I always hear people talking about South Dakota. 
Mm -hmm. Have you heard about yeah. that? That that's like the go-to for like expats and, but I don't know much about it. Yeah. I, from little I know, and I was actually just reading this book, Nomadland, about people who are traveling and doing whatever. It's a movie now. Which yeah, isn't about actually movie. living in your car. It's actually about poverty. But yeah. yeah, apparently South Dakota has some very, very loose residency laws. I think you just need either a post office box or something else. And it's like, you're a resident now. You're yeah. Right. And it's like quick. It's like, okay. You just like sign something and you're a resident of mm -hmm. South Dakota. And it looks like an address. Yeah. Which is interesting because it like they probably make it so loose because they want people to move there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think there's no like income tax either. I think that's another Good. benefit of it. Yeah. I'm like, not like going to go into my long, angry, you know, <laughs> taxation and theft rants, but I'm going to just say I pay too much in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> And, you know, on that note, I was just thinking, like, even being an insurance based provider, you have to be careful about where you change your address to because the rates are different in different states, you know? Yes. Like also, Florida pays less. But go ahead. Yeah. So also, I'm fighting TRICARE because oh. they haven't paid me, you know, the multiple grand they owe me and they have not updated my address. And I'm just like, you people are idiots. You know, why? <laughs> And I'm not going to go into my angry rant about insurance either. It's just like, only put it this way. It, moving anything has always been a travail. I don't know why insurances make it so difficult. Yeah, totally. Totally agree with you. It's very frustrating. And wanting to be an insurance-based provider, it makes it even harder because, you know, mm -hmm. it makes you want to give up sometimes because it can be so difficult. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I can relate to that. <laughs> Well, thank you. Yeah, that's this is so such good information for everybody. Let's see. I think that's all the questions I wanted to ask you. Is there anything else you think people should know or would yes, be helpful? Yes, this is doable. One of my yes. things is getting over my own anxiety and my own perfectionism and all the other crap. This is super doable. If I can do it with just a van and, you know, still keeping my apartment and, you know, it's fine. You can do it better than me. You can do the full van build. You can do, you know, we'll just get the hotels and the Airbnbs and figure it out the way what you want to. I believe Amber Lida was talking about, you know, her dream was to get a houseboat. And now she doesn't do that, but she travels a lot every year. And, you know, there's so many opportunities with mm -hmm. digital nomad life and being counselors and being a counselor in a time where there's so much abundance. So... If you're listening to this and you have any desire to be like, I want to travel more or you just get out of the entire like living in one place life, you can do it. Ah, uh, I love that. Yes, you can. <laughs> That's the whole point in this is I want people to just be able to go live their dream now and not have to wait till they Absolutely. retire or, you know, yes. you're too old to go or whatever, you know. Yes. Thank you so much. So are you documenting your journeys anywhere? Like, you know, Instagram or anything like that? Or I will definitely be taking lots of pictures. I will post cool. them on the Instagram and as well, probably also my business page on the Instagram as well. Oh, cool. What's your, what's your Instagram in case anybody wants to follow my you? My Instagram is prosperity counseling and coaching and I'll get the actual um, tag. It's prosperity underscore CC. Okay. And yeah, feel free to friend me. Cool. We'll yeah. put you on the um, show notes too. So if people want to follow you and, and follow your journey, I know I'm going to be. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I really appreciated talking with you today. I think this is going to be help so helpful for people. And just thanks a lot for taking the time. Yeah. Thank you very much for inviting me. Always happy to, you know, spread the word. Awesome. Take care. You too. Thank you so much for listening to the Traveling Therapist podcast. For show notes, links, and downloads, head over to thetravelingtherapist.com, where you'll be able to learn more about my journey, the courses I've created for you, and other exciting resources to make your dreams become a reality. If you've enjoyed this episode, please share with your traveling therapist friends, subscribe to the podcast, and if you love this episode, please leave a review.